Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the first black hole ever discovered. The black hole known as Cygnus X1. And more importantly, we're going to be talking about new discoveries in regards to this black hole that actually suggest it's also the fastest spinning black hole we've found so far, and it's the biggest or the most massive stellar mass black hole found in the galaxy. Meaning that it has a lot of new records under its name. But we're also going to talk a little bit more about the history of this black hole, because this is probably one of those black holes everyone should know. Assuming that you know what M87 black hole is, you should definitely know about Cygnus X1. And here, let's start with the history. Back in the days before satellites became very common, the scientists used to use these sounding rockets, basically the rockets that you would send into the upper atmosphere and into space as well, in order to conduct all sorts of atmospheric and space research. And in 1964, one of these rockets, this one right here, known as Aerobee, discovered an unusual X-ray source, and actually an extremely powerful X-ray source, coming from the region in the night skies known as Cygnus. The region that's also famous for the very large star known as Deneb. And though at first it wasn't really clear about what this particular source was, about 10 years later, in 1974, two famous astrophysicists, Stephen Hawking and Kip Thorne that you see right here on this picture from Caltech, decided to make a friendly bet on what exactly it is it that they found. Kip Thorne was convinced that this was a black hole, and this would be the first ever black hole found, confirming the Einstein theories. Stephen Hawking did not believe so, he thought it was maybe a neutron star, possibly something else. And following several major studies in the 90s, Stephen Hawking conceded that he was wrong, this was indeed a black hole. The first ever black hole discovered, the first ever black hole confirmed. The black hole that you see simulated right here, known as Cygnus X1. Now it doesn't really have a proper name just yet, but it probably will in the future. And what's really interesting about this particular black hole is that it's also referred to as a microquasar, mostly because all of its features, including the accretion disk, the astrophysical jets, and a lot of energies that it's producing are extremely similar to the energies we observe from quasars. The supermassive black holes in the middle of different galaxies really, really far away that often have very similar effects, but on much larger scales. And because of this, Cygnus X1 also became the first ever microquasar. But because most of the radiation produced here is in the X-rays, it actually took a while for us to study all of this. And it wasn't until the 70s when the first ever X-ray satellite was launched, the satellite you see right here known as Uhuru, finally allowed the scientists to study this X-ray object in more detail, while at the same time discovering 300 more similar objects. Some of them ended up being neutron stars, some of them ended up being distant galaxies, others being black holes. But because this object has been discovered several decades ago, it's also the most studied black hole ever. And so it is kind of unusual to have a new study come up with some kind of a detail that we've missed originally. And specifically in this case, what the study discovered is that the mass of this object was actually most likely underestimated along with the total spin of this black hole. By using extremely accurate new observations, using a technique that's actually quite common, known as parallax, the scientists were able to establish that the distance here is about 7200 light years away from Earth, much more distant than we originally thought. This implies that the black hole is about 21 masses of the Sun. It is more massive than we originally thought, making this the most massive stellar size or stellar mass black hole. This is obviously still not the most massive black hole discovered, but it's the most massive smaller black hole. And all of this is thanks to some of the new techniques used in this study that relied on, well, basically an Earth-sized telescope, the network known as VLBA, or Very Long Baseline Array. This tiny image right here kind of shows you the total size of this network, essentially allowing us to have extremely accurate observations. And here's how the black hole compares to our own sun as well. But it's also important to understand that the reason this black hole is so extremely bright and has so many different emissions in X-ray frequency is really because it also has an extremely massive donor star next to it. The star that's about double the mass or about 40 masses of the sun. And this image here illustrates what all of this most likely looks like. We basically have a very large O-type star that's extremely massive and most likely will go supernova at some point as well, with the black hole that's really massive as well, essentially leaching off a tremendous amount of matter 
turning it into a very powerful accretion disk and then emitting all of this light toward planet Earth from a really far away distance of about 7000 light years. The star itself is known as HGE226868 and is also extremely bright and extremely hot. The temperature here is about 31,000 degrees Kelvin and it's also about 400,000 times more luminous than the Sun. The distance between these two objects is roughly around 0.2 astronomical units or about half the distance of the Sun to Mercury and based on the observation of some of the nearby stars, it's assumed to be about 5 million years old. With the original mass of the star that became a black hole later also being about 40 masses of the Sun. And so the original system of two stars may have looked something like this. We have these two giant stars orbiting around one another, with one of them, the one that's probably a little bit more massive, or possibly the one that stole the most mass initially, going supernova, or potentially collapsing into the black hole directly and turning into the invisible partner that currently is known as Cygnus X1. And right after this, it started to consume all of this mass from its partner, essentially turning into a micro quasar. Now, because these two stars were so close together, the scientists don't really think that there was a supernova, or at least if it was a supernova, it probably wasn't very powerful. Otherwise, the partner star would have been kicked out of the system. And so in order to maintain such a close distance between two objects, the star had to collapse into the black hole without producing much energy. But interestingly, not only is this black hole more massive than originally thought, it also is spinning practically at the limit of how fast black holes can spin. Essentially, the spin here is nearly the speed of light. And that's really unusual, but also extremely interesting. It's definitely going to be producing a lot more studies in the future. And all of this spin is most likely produced by essentially absorbing so much mass. And as all of this mass is absorbed from the star, so is the angular momentum. And all of this angular momentum transfers into the black hole, making it spin even faster. And because the observations here essentially involved looking at the star and the black hole as they made a single orbit around one another, so far it looks like these are the most accurate observations of Cygnus X1 we've ever had. Which also of course implies that this is probably as accurate as it will get for the next few years and it will probably end up producing a lot of really interesting studies. But for now this is all we know about Cygnus X1. It seems to be a record holder for many different reasons the most massive stellar sized black hole, the fastest spinning black hole, and also just generally an extremely interesting object. We'll definitely learn more about this object in the next years, but until we do, well, that's pretty much it. Check out the videos and all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon, or by joining the channel membership, or maybe by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.